or vow any futurity for any but armed insects. That's going to be the problem now. You kids get out of the way. That's going to be the problem now, you know? What are we going to do with it once we tear it down? This is what we're going to do. That was a, huh? a good idea. Huh? What do you think? A park? Get your house from a ball? What do you care? I'm not you, Harry. Well, I'll just make a, a little park for the older people to sit in and enjoy themselves. Right. I was thinking maybe a nice sitting park, you know, with benches and trees. Make a little area. All right, you kids get on the side. Where the what do you think? people can enjoy themselves. You know, they can sit down in the park with little trees. Right. And uh, sit down and relax. You know, these I, I know we'll these people live around here a long time. They don't tend to go anywhere. Right. Except to the park, I guess, to sit down and relax for the rest of their lives. I think uh, and it's going to be up to us to take care of it once we get well, it down. us younger people, we have to do something about it. It's about time. It's been going, going on for a long time now. I say about a, a good 18 years. Oh, yeah. Easy. Really easy. Good really 18, 18 years. Messed up, you know? Right. Definitely. It's about time. You want to get? About time that uh, we get something done. The return to sanity begins with a realization. When we fragment, ultimately we destroy. And boundaries drawn around the individual mistake the unit of survival, because only the individual in context has a chance. The task is to restore our links to context, to be included again in surroundings we have opposed to ourselves and made alien to us, to allow mind to act as a junction extending outwards to include not only the self, but also the circuits informing us and linking us in context, human and physical. This means recognizing the primacy of relationship and retesting in that light all the preconceptions which create barriers around us. Even the language we use, relying on noun and pronoun, is a language of objects, unable to express relationship, so that we see other people as isolated, demarcated, and as much opposed to ourselves as the rest of our experience. These and other separations reinforce each other, making the pathways of relationship in the world invisible to us. To become fit for survival, we must somehow piece together a truer picture of the world. Much as Freud turned us inwards to accept reasons of the heart and body previously ignored, each of us will now have to look outwards to reasons of the interconnected totality, the social system and planetary ecology not to achieve a mere knowledge of the workings of these, which is difficult enough, but to habitually take into account the interrelationship of part and whole, the circuits of relationship involved in day-to-day -day decisions and actions. As yet, there is no one who can think in this way, but larger policy decisions lacking in this wisdom are becoming more and more dangerous, and they will continue to do so until social systems, like individuals, find a way to redraw their boundaries looking outwards to accept interdependence upon other peoples in the ecosphere, and inwards to achieve flexibility, the ability to adapt to change and transmit it throughout the system, even if this means that the power to regulate has to be removed from the center and spread throughout the whole. The hope is to learn to think in this new way, and to prevail upon those in power that these considerations transcend the political battleground. They are far more elementary. They are the prerequisites for the survival of any circuit, be it a nation, or a blind man, or the smallest living organism. The changes required are difficult even to conceive of, yet they do not seem disproportionate to the threats facing us. And this century has amply shown that no threat can be disregarded simply because it seems unthinkable to us.